Well, good morning and welcome back. It's the almost daily vlog here at Life in the Hyam House. And uh, it's been a week. And uh, it's been a week because I've been out of town. Uh, Amy and I went to a conference last week. We were out of town from Monday through uh, Thursday morning. Uh, and at the conference, there was no vlogging because we were at a ministry conference, a student ministry conference, which was amazing. I'm going to talk about it here later on. Um, and then Thursday, we left the conference and drove all the way to Rochester to uh, pick up Brea, who was spending the week with Nate and Amaris and the grandkids. And then we drove all the way back, and then we got through the weekend. And now it's a brand new week and a brand new episode of the Almost Daily Vlog. And uh, I'm in the garage because we're going to be spending a fair amount of time here in the garage over the next couple of episodes. And uh, that's because uh, we are getting ready for we're getting ready for spring. And so that means we need to do some work here in the garage. Um, but I want to share something with you. Uh, but before I do that, I need to get the car out of here to create some space for the projects that we have to start this week. All right, so let me go ahead and do that real quick. Now, if the rodent who predicts the weather is accurate, he is saying that uh, spring is coming early this year. And some of that might be true because we have had some incredibly warm days uh, over the last couple of weeks, uh, at least here where we are. Um, there's been occasional cold day and some snow. Like for instance, it snowed most of Sunday. Uh, we got flurries all day long. Nothing that accumulated, just snow falling. And it was pretty cold. But all last week, even while we were away at our conference, the weather was incredible. I mean, we were hitting 60s. I think the one day we hit 70. It was absolutely amazing. And we went um, to the Laurel Hills, the Laurel Highlands. You know how we love the Laurel Highlands, but that just happened to be where the conference was. Um, and usually in March, like that space is all about cold and snow and rain and mud and it's gross, but it was absolutely gorgeous. So if the rodent is correct, and if we're going to have an early summer this year or an early spring, then um, hey, we're going to take advantage of that. Uh, plus, we are we are launching into maybe one of our our biggest attempts at our garden this year. Um, and to do that, we have to start some seeds, which we're going to do this week. But here's what I want to do. And trying to keep this vlog under 10, 15-ish minutes, um, we went shopping this weekend. You know that we were planning to get some new feather friends to join our flock so that we can continue our egg uh, production. Which, just to tell you, our egg layers right now are, are killing it. We're getting 8 to 10 eggs a day. Um, it's becoming a little more consistent. I'm keeping track of what we're getting each day because I want to see what it looks like and uh, exactly at what point we become consistent with about, I mean, we have 14, 14 layers um, and I tried to get chickens that produce high volumes of eggs. And so um, for what we have, we should be seeing uh, either almost daily or almost every other day. Um, and some of them are definitely laying daily because if there's 14 chickens and we're getting 8 to 10 eggs a day, someone is working overtime and giving us a little bit more. And I'm okay with that. If they're willing to put the effort in, I'm willing to enjoy the, the fruit of their labor. But this weekend, we got the phone call from our local Royal King. I was over there earlier last weekend just to check to see what, what they had. They are getting their their delivery of chicks pretty quickly now. Um, and they're having all sorts of different breeds. And so went over to see what they had. We were planning to go away, so I didn't want to get anything, but I wanted to talk to somebody because we're interested in specific uh, chicks at this point. Again, we're looking for high production layers and we're looking for some colored egg layers. And so I went over there to see what they had. So I talked with one of their salesperson who works with the chicks 
And she totally got me, like, gave me the hookup, gave me the lowdown. I'm super psyched. I gave her my phone number. I said, here's what I'm looking for. Um, if you get any of these, give a call and we'll come over and we'll pick them up. And so uh, as we were coming home from Rochester, we got a phone call saying that Fresh Chicks had just come in and there were some of the breeds that we were looking for. And so we got home, we unloaded the truck real quick and Bray and I jumped in the truck and we drove back to Royal King and um, we picked up some friends. And so I wanna introduce you to our, our new friends that are gonna help us boost our egg laying capacity here. So let me throw you up here on the table and I will introduce you to our chickens. All right, so uh, we've picked up, we picked up a few more than we probably should have, but as is always the case, we lose one or two, and so I didn't want to have to make a trip back out there to pick up a few uh, if we had lost any. And so I got 14. It's going to put us at our limit. I didn't want to go to our limit, but, you know, we were anticipating. I mean, we've lost chicks before. I mean, it happens as part of the whole, you know, brooding and raising process. Sometimes chicks just don't make it for whatever reason. Um, but so far, we picked them up on Friday evening. It is now uh, Monday morning, and they all seem to be doing really, really well. So we got uh, a couple different breeds uh, for different reasons. So let me grab these and see if I can share them with you. And hopefully the camera uh, works here for me. So let me see here. All right, we got one. All right. So, I mean, they are super, super tiny right now. Let me look at that little guy. Actually, I should probably say, look at that little girl. Let me get you in zoom there. There you go. So one of the one of the breeds that we have come to really love, they're called Sapphire Gems. They got this kind of like bluish purplish feather that comes in when they're adults. They're a little iridescent. They're really, really pretty. Um, they lay brown eggs and Amy loves them. And so uh, we had them before and a predator got into our coop um, and annihilated them. So. It's been a while. We've been shopping for them. We've been waiting to get them. And uh, this is probably one of the breeds that we wanted to get the most. And so we picked up four. And we're super excited with these little guys because they're going to be so pretty. And they're super cool. I mean, they're just, I mean, they're great little chicks there. So we'll put her back. All right. And the next one we picked up, it's hard to see now. But there are also a, a, a chicken called a Lavender Orpington, and uh, that's what I believe this one is going to be. So again, kind of like the Sapphire Gems, this one is going to have some uh, bluish gray uh, iridescent feathers, kind of on the purple side. They're going to look a little purple. Um, and so we picked up one of these, and again, look, super, super cute. I mean, come on. Who wouldn't want one of these coming home? Adorable. All right, I'm going to put you back in there. So we picked up two of those because... We don't really need that many purple, purple chickens. And then we went with some um, tried and true. Uh, we love our Easter eggers and we love our Americanas. We're getting blue eggs and we're getting green eggs. And so we had to pick up two more of those. So we picked up two more. Now this is not an Easter egger. I take that back. This is gonna be, I believe this is gonna be one of our comments. So we picked up Golden Comets and we picked up Cinnamon Queens. We like them. They're pretty good layers. They're gonna give us a lot of eggs. Where's my, here we go. Here is one of my Easter Eggers. So this is one of our Easter Eggers. She's super pretty. She's pretty white and yellow. Got this little black spot on the back of her, her body here. A couple black spots underneath her wings. But we have that one. And we have this one, our other other Easter Egger. And so he's going to be cool if I can get them to focus here. There we go. Focus in on this little guy because he's like all blurry right now. There you go. Look how cute he is. But black. He's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. I'm not sure if I can find one of... Let's see. Spread out, everybody. Spread out. Ah, this is our Americana. So we get two Americanas and uh, these should give us uh, blue eggs, we're hoping, or at least colored eggs. We're not sure what color they're going to end up being, but we're hoping for blue. 
But we really love the Americanas, and so we've got those. So that's it. 14. We're super psyched. Glad to have our chickens. We'll talk more about them in just a second. So 14 new chicks. Let me recap for you the breeds that we picked up. We picked up our Sapphire Gems, which we love. We picked up two new ones. We've never had these before, but I'm really excited to see them. Uh, and that are our Lav Lavender Orpingtons. We picked up um, two more Easter Eggers, two more Americanas. We picked up two, they're a little older, so we get them really cheap, but two Comet, Golden Comets and two cinnamon queens and so what we're hoping for so all of those breeds lay pretty well so we should have a good egg production season um the americanas and the easter eggers are going to give us colored eggs and so we're excited about that because we want to see more colored eggs right now our easter egger and our americana are giving us really beautiful light blue and really cool green eggs and so we're super excited about that. It's still a little early this morning, no one's laying, but they are in the coop. But again, our hope is, uh oh, actually it does look like someone has laid. Let's go see, there's something in the coop here. But our hope is to eventually get to a place where we're producing uh, almost, if not there, two dozen eggs a week. We would love, or a day, two dozen a day. That's, that's kind of my goal. Um, and then we wanna make these eggs available and share them and tell people that they can come and get our eggs and it looks like someone has started laying and they've left it in the coop so let's go and rescue that egg before they start cracking and chewing them all up oh good grief all right i'm gonna talk a little bit more about the chicks here before watch out girls watch out watch out oh scram scram see that right there Got to rescue that little egg. Clean it off a little bit. All right, everyone. We took, we had a lot of rain this weekend and the coop is pretty, pretty muddy. But check this out. Ordered these little fittings here from Amazon. Saw some other chicken people who had them made their own buckets or not made their own buckets but that got their own buckets made their own feeders so i wanted to do that because i'm trying to like do this as efficiently as possible and it was really inexpensive to get the parts and i got enough parts to put as many as four buckets out that's each bucket having four feeders and four waterers so that's that's two waterers and two feeder buckets all like this and I'm gonna rearrange a few things because I don't like it hanging here I'm gonna put it back up underneath where it can be in uh, in out of the weather but I'll move that probably later this week right now they're just getting used to eating out of it and the cool thing is they are eating out of it look so we can get her to go ahead no don't eat what's on the ground although eat what's on the ground I don't want to waste it but I put it in there and I didn't have to really train them I just kind of kind of like drop a little bit of food around it and they came right over and had no problem finding the food but the girls are looking good coop not so good we gotta dry this out this week and and uh, freshen her up but we'll get to that so yeah the plan is to pick up three more buckets make two of them waterers one more feeder and then i'll have a really great system we'll be able to fill it up get a couple days of both food and water out of it and it'll make it a little easier to take care of them and they won't run out of food as quite as quickly because we'll be able to keep them up a little bit so really excited about that but i was talking about eggs our goal is to get at least two dozen eggs that we can then make available and sell and share right now we're getting 
approximately 10 eggs a day, give or take an egg or two. And it's pretty cool. Like it's really kind of fun to finally be in that spot where we are producing as many eggs as we are. Now, back to the chicks. Doing the chickens has become fairly easy. I've got enough equipment now that to set up brooders, to feed them, it's really no more expensive. I think it's one of the things I like about this is, you know, we got the waterers, we got the feeders, we've got the brooders, we've got the heat lamps. So I don't have to buy that stuff every season. I just gotta get the chicks. And if you remember from one of my earlier videos when we talked about chicks and our plan for, you know, egg production and caring for our chickens, is that we wanna have this rotation built into place where every year we get, you know, I don't know, 10, 10 to 15, 10 to 16 chicks. Knowing that the lifespan of a, a layer is about three years. And so after three years, their egg production is either going to slow or it's going to stop. And so to, f to avoid finding ourselves in a place where our chickens get too old and they're not laying and we don't have any other chickens, um, you know, the, the, the rule of thumb is let's replace the ones. So we have 14 out there. We just picked up 14. Eventually, the 14 that we have will stop laying but I already have the 14 to replace those chickens. And then next season, if everybody stays healthy and well, uh, we'll do the same thing. We'll pick up another 10 to 14 chickens that will be there to help replace that next, that, up, that older brood. And then so if every year you're just picking up a couple chickens to replace those chickens that are going out, we will eventually have an egg production where we're producing eggs and we're able to share and sell eggs and we're not really slowing or we're not missing anything because we're waiting for chicks to mature. So like this season, our 14 are going to continue to lay, but the new 14, they're not going to be mature enough until uh, later on. I mean, they're not going to be, it's about 20, 21 weeks for a chicken to mature to start laying eggs. We've kind of experienced that some of them go a little early, some of them go a little late, but um, if our timing is right, these chicks that we just bought, the new 14, will start laying their eggs mid to late July. Um, and so that'll give us, hopefully, one of our, our goals. And we'll have some time before it gets cold to actually see the chicks and see how they start producing. Because it's not like they all just start popping out eggs every day. It's going to come as they mature and as they're ready and as conditions allow. And so my hope is before we get to the really cold weather where they generally stop or slow laying, we're going to see all uh, the original 14 and the new 14, we're going to see them all starting to lay and hopefully we'll see what that's going to look like. And then come the new year, again, another 14, let them come to maturity and then we'll really be in full production. So that's kind of the goal is to keep this rotation going um, so that we never find ourselves in a place that we don't have mature chicks that are producing eggs. Because if the goal is to have, you know, I don't know, gosh, my goal would be to have a thousand egg layers and then we have a, like a full professional production. That would be awesome. But, you know, I probably because of where we live, I probably wouldn't go more than what we're going to have now. I just think for the sake of our neighbors, um, for the space that we have, my ability to care for them, I think what we're going to do is we're going to max out in that 24 to 26, 27, 28 area there. I don't know that we'll go over 30. Um, I don't plan to go over 30, but with chicken math, you never know what's gonna happen. Uh, plus, I wanna make sure we have space on the property to still do meat birds, and I'd like to do chickens again, or turkeys again. We did turkeys a couple years ago at a previous um, resident, and we were able to produce them and have them for Thanksgiving. I'd like to, well, we didn't have it for Thanksgiving. We had them, I butchered them for Thanksgiving. Um, first time butcher. We did have some of the turkey. Some of the turkey did not go so well. But I'd still like to have our own turkey and get to the place where we're eating our turkey for Thanksgiving. And so I'd like to get to that place. And so to do that, we're probably going to have to get a turkey or two here pretty soon and get them on the property and get them, you know, beefed up so that we can have them. 
but uh, yeah, that's kind of where we are. So, all right, I said I wanted to keep this to like 15 minutes. I know I'm going over 15 minutes, or at least I think I'm going over 15 minutes. So let me just wrap this up. Um, kind of a, a weird vlog here. I'll do a little better explaining things tomorrow. But new chicks are in. Current chickens are doing great. Great egg production. We're about to kick into our pre-spring preparation. I've picked up a ton of seeds. I've got our garden stuff. I gotta pull a few more things out of the shed. I got my work table. Mostly clear it off. That's where the new greenhouses are gonna go. We're gonna get all of that up and running this week. We Here's the deal. We've been calling this the almost daily vlog. We will probably only do the almost daily vlog until the end of this week or the end of this month. And then we're gonna shift over and we're gonna get into our backyard farming, homesteading, whatever you wanna do. We're gonna do the chickens, we're gonna do the, the plants. It's probably not gonna be every day. I'll probably just do like videos throughout the week and then produce one video to say, here's what's happened in the last week because I don't know that I'm going to have the time to do vlogs every single day. Um, and if I do, we'll still come back once or twice a week uh, with the Almost Daily Vlog and just give you more encouragement because I want the, the Almost Daily Vlog to be all about life and life encouragement. But like I said, we're getting into the, the garden season and those videos will be more about what we're learning and what we're doing with the garden. And of course, with that will come all of the freezing and the canning and the preserving. We've already broken out the, uh, uh, the dehydrator. It's working. We've already dehydrated some strawberries and we're do we got some apple slices in there now, kind of just you know getting reacquainted with the dehydrator. Um, I've already got some of my mason jars washed and staged and ready to go. Like we're not ready to do that just yet, but I feel like let's just let's get things. Let's get things cleaned up, let's get things organized, and let's get ready to go. So, that's where we are. All right, let me wrap this up, because it's way longer than I wanted it to be, and I gotta go edit it and get it up so it goes up for today, so I can kind of get back into the routine of doing vlogging. All right, my friends, thanks so much for watching. Yeah, new chicks, they're here, we're excited. About to start planning, it's gonna be great. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time, right here on the Almost Daily Vlog at Life in the High House. Later.